Whether we're lining up just the right shot for a cinematic or trying to create the perfect look and feel for the player's camera, Cinemachine has us covered. Today we're going to learn all about the properties of the Cinemachine virtual camera so that we can frame our game's camera systems to look exactly as we want. As always, a huge thank you to the iHeartGame to patrons for selecting this video's topic. And now, let's get started. Cinemachine is one of the most feature-rich camera packages we have available in Unity. Using Cinemachine, we can create practically all camera types and perspectives we need in our games. This includes third-person, first-person, fixed cameras, cinematics, and more. To begin using Cinemachine, we need to download the Cinemachine package directly from the Package Manager. Note that this tutorial is using version 2.6.11. Once downloaded, we first need to add a Unity camera to our scene, and then attach the Cinemachine Brain component to this Unity camera. The Cinemachine Brain is one of the two components required when using Cinemachine, and to get full understanding of how it works, I highly recommend checking out my full video breakdown of the Cinemachine Brain and all of its properties. Though, to summarize, this brain component will select one active Cinemachine virtual camera to override the values of the Unity camera that we've attached the brain to. As the central topic of today's video, Cinemachine virtual cameras are the second required component when using Cinemachine. Virtual cameras provide the overriding values to the brain and control the game's view. To use Cinemachine virtual cameras, all we need to do is create an empty game object and attach the Cinemachine virtual camera component. Because we have already attached the Cinemachine brain to the main camera, we will see the game window snap to the position and rotation of this newly created virtual camera game object renamed Virtual Camera 1. Now, if we modify the position and rotation transform values of Virtual Camera 1, this will directly impact the Unity camera and therefore the game's view. These overriding values are for specific shared properties between the virtual camera and the Unity camera. Of course, the previously mentioned transform properties, position and rotation, but also the lens properties of the virtual camera as well. Let's take a look at the camera frustum in the scene view. We can see how the camera's perspective broadens when we increase the field of view and gets more narrow as we decrease it. How it rotates when we adjust the dutch. And how the near and far clip planes determine the start and end point of what's supposed to be rendered and in the screen space of the shot. The versatility of the virtual camera is what makes Cinemachine such a fantastic package and it's what we'll begin learning about today. We can have an unlimited number of virtual cameras, but let's remember only one is active at a given time. When a new Cinemachine virtual camera game object is activated, Cinemachine automatically blends to this new camera's values. It's actually incredible. Now, the two properties that help make Cinemachine so powerful are the virtual cameras follow and look at. Follow and look at each expect a reference to a game object in the scene that has the transform property. What we need to understand on a base level is that follow will take control of the virtual camera's position transform property and physically move the camera in accordance to its reference target. And look at will do the same for the rotation transform property and physically rotate the camera so that the target is always in view. To demonstrate, we have this Jamo character model featured from the hit YouTube channel Mix and Jam, and the current hierarchical state machine featured on this channel for Jamo's traversal. Selecting the virtual camera, we can drag the Jamo game object from the hierarchy into the reference box for the follow property. By default in play mode, adding the reference to Jamo actually didn't do anything, but why? This is because the follow property is directly linked to the body property, which can be found lower on the virtual camera's property list. The body property contains a list of selectable algorithms that we can choose from, 
Each option determines the style of movement that the virtual camera will use to follow its given target. So, we'll notice that the body property's default setting is do nothing, which explains why the virtual camera currently remains in place in play mode. But what happens if we change the body property? Taking a look at the list of options, all of these algorithms will move the camera in a different way. And most notably, each algorithm also exposes a new list of associated properties. This linked relationship between follow and body is the same for the look at and aim properties. Aim also has a list of selectable algorithms and we'll go over each body and aim algorithm and their respective properties in detail in separate videos. But let's run through a quick overview of each for a general feel of what virtual cameras can do. In order, third person follow was a recent addition to this list, new in version 2.6. It's designed to be, quote, a dead accurate third person aiming camera. So think Uncharted and Gears of War cameras built into Cinemachine. Designed for 2D and orthographic perspective games, the frame transposer moves in a fixed screen space relationship to the target. This means that it's essentially keeping itself the same distance from the target depending on how the target moves and trying to keep it centered. Potentially seen in games like Hades and Hollow Knight. Hard Lock to Target uses the exact same position as the follow target. This might make the most sense when trying to create a first person perspective camera. The orbital transposer will use the follow target as an orbit point, allowing the player to revolve around the target. Similar to how a camera orbits a vehicle in Halo. Track Dolly allows us to create a predefined path that we want our camera to follow. And based on the location of the follow target, it can automatically move to the closest point on that path. Often seen in earlier action and horror games like Devil May Cry, and last of the body properties, Transposer comes with its own list of binding modes, each with its own coordinate space and functionality. This includes following the target's transform position even when it rotates, or locking the rotation at the start. Or even more impressive, minimizing the distance traveled to maintain the same distance from the target, just like a human camera operator would. Shifting to the aim property, the composer is the first algorithm, and it rotates the camera to face the look at target, while exposing a bunch of different properties that can customize how it moves. Group composer is quite similar, but it expects the look at target to be a target group, and it provides properties that help us keep multiple game objects in view of the camera. Hard look at will rotate the camera to look exactly at the follow target, plain and simple. POV, or point of view, uses a player's input to rotate the camera about its current position. We can imagine that this is great for first person games, and it even notably contains the ability to recenter after a certain amount of inactive time. Same as follow target inherits the rotational values of the look at target. Fantastic! We can already begin to see how robust the virtual camera and Cinemachine can be, and again, we'll cover each algorithm and its properties in greater detail in the future. But for today, there's still plenty to learn. Let's break down the remaining properties of the virtual camera, starting at the top. Status is a relatively straightforward property that displays live, standby, or disabled, depending on the current status of the virtual camera. Live is shown when the virtual camera is actively being used by the brain. Standby is when the virtual camera game object is enabled, but is not actively being used by the brain. And disabled is when the virtual camera game object is disabled. Pressing the solo toggle will highlight the property in yellow and automatically set the camera as the active camera for the brain. This provides a quick way to modify any particular virtual camera. It's worth noting that the standby update property is directly correlated to the standby status. When in standby, the virtual camera will consume processing power and update its position depending on the standby update property. The standby update properties include always, round robin, and never. Always is the most performance heavy and will update the position every frame, 
the same as the active camera. Never does not update the camera until it becomes the brain's active camera. And round robin updates the virtual cameras in standby, but at a lower and lower frequency the more cameras that are active. The Game Window Guides toggle will activate and deactivate a helpful overlay displayed in the game window. This overlay is only visible depending on the selected settings of the body and aim properties that we are just beginning to explore, but we'll dive into this in the video's focus on the body and aim algorithms. As can be deduced fairly quickly, save during gameplay is awesome as it avoids one of our least favorite mistakes, making edits to a game object's properties when in play mode, only to accidentally disable play mode and lose those changes. With this active, property values of the virtual camera are always saved. When there is more than one camera in the scene, the priority property indicates to Cinemachine Machine Brain which camera to make active. This goes to whichever virtual camera has the highest number. And changing which camera has the highest number while in play mode will trigger a blend. The Transitions dropdown contains Blend Hint, Inherit Position, and an On-Camera Live Event Manager. Blend Hint determines the path that Cinema Machine will take when traveling to this virtual camera. The options include None, Spherical Position, Cylindrical Position, and Screen Space Aim when targets differ. When None is selected, the path to the position and the rotation to the target is linear. It's a spherical path and linear rotation when spherical is selected, a cylindrical path and linear rotation for cylindrical, and most interestingly, for screen space aim when targets differ, it's a linear position blend and a radial rotation blend to the new target. Definitely try testing each of these out for your own use case to see what provides the most favorable results. The Inherit Position checkbox modifies the position of the virtual camera to where the Unity camera currently is. What this allows is for the virtual camera's damping to be applied when the blend takes place. We'll learn more about damping when exploring body and aim, but it's essentially a smooth lag. On Camera Live is an event manager that will invoke the public functions that we select. We just need to reference the game object that the script is attached to and find the function we want to be called. This event will pass the starting and ending cameras as parameters, and as always with code, it can do pretty much whatever we want. Worth noting, this is the same event as the Cinema Machine Brain's camera activated event, but the difference is that this is specific to the virtual camera with this setting. The final property that we'll touch on today is noise. Noise is intended to add a natural camera shake to the camera's movement. There are predefined noise profiles that we can choose from, or we can create our own. And as for its properties, the pivot offset adds additional variation to the selected noise. Amplitude gain provides a similar effect of creating more drastic movements, and frequency, of course, increases and decreases the rate of the shake. And that covers the properties of the virtual camera. The virtual cameras also include extensions that make the package even more incredible, but like the body and aim properties, that's coming down the line. So stay tuned for future videos. Awesome job. Now that we know how to use the core components of Cinema Machine, we can start diving into its more interesting features. To vote on the next tutorial that we'll cover on this channel, be sure to check out the iHeartGameDev Patreon. And a special thanks to Zach Etz here, One Beats, Greg the Alien, and all of the current patrons for your support. You helped make this channel happen, so thank you so much. If you'd like to join an awesome growing community of developers just like yourself, we'd love to have you in the iHeartGameDev channel Discord. Today, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.